I've got gardens growing, got quiet days, clothes on my back, food on my plate. I got friends to help me if I call for them. Well, I don't need anything that I don't have. Mahalo for joining us today. I want to welcome you once again to our Meet the Makers virtual event series in partnership with Hawaiian Airlines Bank of Hawaii World Elite MasterCard. If you're tuned into our pre-show, you'll learn the answers to the trivia questions within the next few minutes. I'm your host, Melly James, co-founder of Mana Up, a local accelerator program to help Hawaii businesses grow and scale to global markets. On Oahu, we have a shop, House of Mana Up, where you can find the products made by these entrepreneurs who participated in our program. If you are a Hawaiian Airlines Bank of Hawaii World Elite MasterCard holder, we have an exclusive perk for you when you shop with us at House of Mana Up. Earn two miles for every $1 you spend on houseofmanaup.com. I'm super excited for today's show. So we're here with top chef Sheldon Simeon, uh, who's a top chef finalist, right? And we also is the owner of Tin Roof Maui and the author of Cook Real Hawaii. Love it. All right, so chef, I love seeing that behind the scenes look during the pre-show and seeing the passion and aloha that went into your debut cookbook, Cook Real Hawaii. Speaking of your cookbook, we're here doing a giveaway of one personalized and autographed copy of your cookbook during today's event. So enter, to enter, click the link we post in the comment section below and we will announce the winner at the end of the show. So stay tuned, like actually at the end of the show. So stay on and we will be announcing it. Um, so Chef, what are we up to today? We cooking today. We're gonna be cooking on one of my favorite recipes from our new cookbook, Cook Real Hawaii. And this takes me back to small kid time sardines poo poo you know like yes it's a humble humble can of tin fish but we're gonna elevate it and bring you back it's gonna be ono all right i'm excited <laughs> <laughs> i gotta try to like practice my tasting face right yeah you can get a lot of that <laughs> all right yeah i was kind of nervous when we first were talking about the tinned fish yeah but now i'm learning it's the hottest food trend right now no totally it is you know like we during this whole pandemic time we had to didn't have time to go to the, you know, chance to go to the store. So we went back to things that was in our pantry. And this, every single country has like their own way of preserving fish. And this is just like old school backyard coming home. I remember eating this coming home from the beach and having tin fish, sardines. All right. Well, I'm excited to try it later. Okay. <laughs> All right. So chef, I know you and I first met when you were in our Mana Up cohort four, mm -hmm. way back. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy just to see how much you've accomplished in the past few years. Um, and so, you know, across the globe, what you <laughs> love for our diverse people and unique local cuisine yeah. that authentically represents the melding of cultures here. And that's absolutely kind of your mantra and just so much of what you're bringing to the table here in your cookbook and just the tin roof and all of yeah. that. So super, super exciting. Um, so we're thrilled to be streaming from Wailuku, Maui. Yeah. So right here, Maui style. And, um, you know, really bringing you real Hawaii cooking with Chef Sheldon, who was born in Hilo yep. and is now here in Wailuku, Maui. So if you have any questions for Chef, be sure to submit them in the comments below and stay tuned after today's cooking segment where we'll sit down with him and he'll answer your questions live. So be sure as soon as you have a question, like put it in. We'll try to get to many, as many as we can. We'll also be talking story, local style, and learn more about his journey to becoming an award-winning chef, the inspiration behind his restaurant, Tin Roof, and his experience being on Top Chef. All right, just before Chef takes over, we're going to throw a trivia question up on the screen. Enter your guesses in the comment section below and we'll reveal the answer just before our questions with Chef with, with the segment. All right. Yes, let's go. All right, so I know everyone's putting in their questions into the comments here. All right, so now let's get started. Now let's hear from Chef Sheldon on some of his favorite local recipes he grew up with. Take it away, Chef. Thank you. Yeah, so my cookbook is exactly that. Some of my favorite recipes that I grew up, grew up with. You know, a lot of the recipes stem from what my dad used to cook for us as a kid, what 
we, my mom used to make and what, all my aunts and uncles and all our cousins would come together and eat. And we talked about this sardine spoopoo, the humble, humble tin fish. Here I have some of the Patagonia provisions. I love that they're using some sustainable fish. So we're using their white anchovy that is in some, uh, some olive oil. But we get some other components. That's what's awesome about this dish. We're going to make some components that should be in your pantry already. And we're gonna make some chili pepper water, we're gonna make some lemon olive oil, and then we're gonna all put it all together. So first thing I'm gonna do, lemon olive oil. You can buy them, go seek it out. I mean, it's out there. It's one of my most favorite uh, ingredients. But if you don't, this is super simple. So I've got some olive oil in the pan, already warmed up. I'm just gonna add some fresh lemons right here. Take on super sharp peeler and just get the zest and you're gonna get all of that beautiful citrus. Try not forget the white pot because that's the, that pot not not taste good. All right, so get all of that, get it in there. We're gonna get three of that in there. Then we're gonna put it into our oil. Again, that's been warming up and then we're gonna let it steep for 15 minutes. Steep, big word for let them sit in the oil. <laughs> that's all you gotta do. And then you have what you have after that is this oil that is perfumed with all of that natural citrus flavor. And it, I put it on everything. Throw them on poke, throw them on top fish, on steak, and you'll have it in your pantry already. So boom, super simple. Lemon oil, that's gonna be a garnish in the dish. Next thing, chili pepper water. Who doesn't like chili pepper water? Our hot sauce of Hawaii. I got some chili pepper water someplace out there. Uh, everybody has their own. We're gonna make one Simeon style, super simple, flavored with all kind of different layers. Usually chili pepper water is just like salt, a little bit garlic, and some Hawaiian chilies, but I'm gonna put a little bit of my Filipino flavor in there. So I'm gonna start off with some garlic, start off some Hawaiian salt. Oh, you got some apple cider vinegar, we get some patis. We get some shoyu. Your Hawaiian chili peppers. This is about uh, 10 of them sliced up. And then to that, I'm just gonna top it off with some warm water. And then there's that word again. We're gonna let that steep. <laughs> Big words you're using. No, so I'm gonna let that go. We usually you would let this chill, let them all come together, and then you get something super, super oh no, chili pepper water, drum on everything. Action. All right, tin fish, sardines. It's so funny. I, I remember as a kid, come home, no more nothing for eat. Dad would always say, get sardines. They, if there's one thing that was in our our pantry all the time, there was always cans of sardines. In fact, sardines were so important. I could, I remember Sunday mornings, I could hear my auntie calling on the phone. Oi, you didn't see the pepper. It's sardines on sale at times. <laughs> That's one thing about canned goods. Cannot go wrong. Gotta make do with what you get. So, sardines, I'm gonna turn this thing on. Hot pan of a stove, super, super easy. Use some of that oil from the can to flavor. I'm gonna add a couple of cloves of garlic. You all know, if, you said, if the recipe count for two cloves of garlic, we put five, six. That's just the way that local style is. My mama, I don't know if that recipe says, I mean, she never followed recipe, but I'm the type of person, if there's two cloves of garlic, I'm putting six cloves of garlic in there. So I'm gonna let that go or, or the fire. I'm gonna add a little bit of togarashi, or if you have some kimchi powder, you can do that too. I'm gonna cook that over some low heat that's gonna flavor the oil, the garlic and the pepper. We're gonna to top that sardines off 
or these anchovies that we have here. We're going to top it off with onions. And I love nothing more than sweet onions. I, I don't know about you. My dad, everything that we put, he always had extra onion in it and everything. It was corned beef onions, beef stew you make with onions, fried fish, onions on the side. So this is one of my favorite ways to coax the sweetness out of the onions and enjoy all its beautifulness. So onions sliced as thin as possible, super cold water. I'm just gonna pour it right over the top. I'm gonna let that sit. <laughs> We're gonna let that go and then mix it all together. What that is is gonna take all the bitterness out of that those onions. We're gonna just let that sit in that ice water for just a little bit. All right, right back to <laughs> right back to our garlic and our chili pepper. So once it's heated up like this, check this bug out. It's heated up. The flavor of that oil is, has all that garlic, chili pepper. We're gonna put our sardines in there. Turn our fire on. Boom. Super, super fast. Try to get it in a layer, just like this. That's gonna heat up super quick. I'm gonna flavor that with some apple cider vinegar. A little bit of Yamasa shoyu. And we're gonna let that cook all together. So that oil from the fish, flavored, it's gonna start to caramelize with the shoyu the apple cider vinegar. What we're trying to do is reduce all of that sauce so all that flavor goes right into the fish. I'm gonna let that cook right back to our onions. After soaking for just a little while, one, another technique you could do is like you could wash this with ice water just like you would rice. So a few times to get as much as that bitterness off. This one, one minute of, uh, of soaking in the ice water even that short time does wonders. So we're gonna try to drip it off as much as possible. And put them on top of the pepper towel, let that drain off. And then that's gonna to top off our sardines. Just a little bit. Okay. My dishwasher underneath there. You can, I wish you guys could smell this. I know they, I know it's cliche for say that, but I wish you was here. Because the earls that we say getting off of this is on real. All right, so super easy. That's gonna be mixing just like that. The vinegar, the shoyu, all of that is gonna be going into the sardines. What kind of action you get out here? I can see you guys following along inside there. Right on, okay, yeah, uncle, that's how. That's how you do them. What was that, auntie? No, no, auntie, no need put, no need put sugar. Everything no need sugar, auntie, inside. This is my recipe. Okay, so vinegar and show you, you can see I'm caramelizing a little bit. It's gonna get in there. Slowly bring them all together, just like that. All that garlic slices, a couple more minutes, it's gonna go on top of there. This chili pepper water. Another technique of chili pepper water is you could take all of that garlic and chili peppers, take a blender, mix it all if you like them more spicy. This is gonna be super spicy already, but if you want it even more spicier and you want more of that garlic flavor, take a burr mixer and blend all of that up. Then you're gonna get action kind chili pepper water. Put in the comments how you guys, what is your guys recipe for chili pepper water? I know some guys, I don't like make them too hot because 
Me, I'll, I'll probably end up drinking all of this. If it's too spicy, I'm gonna catch cracks tomorrow, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna keep it, keep it mellow. All right, as it starts to pop like this, you know that it's at the perfect caramelized state. So we're gonna take that off for the fire. I'm gonna start plating. Watch this bad boy. Take this off. I love dishes like this, how simple it is, but the reaction of people when they eat it, it's pretty amazing. All right. We got our sardines down. These ones look like Owamas. One of my favorite things as a kid was catching those little goatfish down by Coconut Island in Hilo. Talking story with all the Japanese men. I don't know, they're still talking about ante. That's why they don't stay home. They rather go fishing. Like Uncle, I said, just trying to catch Owamas, but you're over there telling me your life stories. Are oh, you guys still there? Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so if you guys can take a look real close, the garlic, the chili peppers has come together with the shoyu and vinegar. And I don't know what it is about tin fish. It has like this natural sugars that creates this glaze on top of the fish. That is pretty amazing. So yeah, it might look a little oily, in the pan, but don't be alarmed by it. A lot of that is just that natural sauce that came off of the fish, and you wanna put all of that on top of them. Okay. I'm gonna season this up with that chili pepper water. This one was made, if you guys was following along, we had some Hawaiian salt, some Hawaiian chili pepper, some garlic, shoyu, patisse, because that's what I like. You cannot resist the Filipino urge that comes out in my cooking. So two layers of chili pepper. So we got that, uh, the chili pepper flakes that was in the pan and the Hawaiian chili pepper, building those layers. Then we're going to take our lemon oil. This lemon oil, yeah, we just did it now, but just imagine if this was steeping for the last 15 minutes and then it's sat to cool. It has this beautiful, you can even see the sheen of it. Even the color of the oil that comes off of the, the lemons gives this beautiful brightness to it. Just like this. All right, so we're gonna slowly drizzle it over every single fish, just like so. And that's gonna, again, when, when we're making food, we're trying to build all these different layers, yeah? And I love, it's crazy because when I think back of local food, of how simple everything is, but it is, it's like building this flavor. It's like in our pantry, we get chili pepper water. We always, from young kid time, we're putting shoyu and furikake on top of our rice. It's like always ingrained into our, our cuisine of we wanting uh, layers of food and to be kind of explosive in the end. Simple dish like this. Then we're gonna take our beautiful Maui onions that is on here. I'm gonna put it right on top of the fish. The contrast of it. Like the bitterness of that uh, and the spiciness of the onions has gone away into the ice water. And then now you're left with this. Like this. Take a little bit more of the chili pepper water. Dress it on top of the onions. 
What else we got? Some cracked pepper, finish over the top. And there you have it. That's our sardines poo poo dish right now. Now you can do this with, I've done it with sardines, cans in tomatoes. The sardines in, uh, like this one's in lemon olive oil. The, the other one is in garlic oil. Try them out. Try them. You can do them with salmon. You can do it with all kinds of different fish. So I hope you get the action. Get some chili pepper water. Show you some vinegar and some sweet onions. Poo poo sardines. I hear you're telling people you wish they were here. I do too. I mean, this smells so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. I mean, there's something about it, right? Just like so simple yeah. and just like that, those flavors. It's got that wonderful like vinegar, but it's like a light. I mean, it's. When you were saying with the, when it's a tinned, tinned fish, there's something that's kind of special about that scent. Yeah, it's that just cooks. something about that. That's, it's been in that can for preserving. And then as it cooks, it creates this glaze when you throw uh, like shoyu and vinegar at it. It wants to stick to the fish and it, it's delicious. Love it. All right. <laughs> So, um, you know, I know we're going to be trying this soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get my tasting face on. Um, but first, we're going to watch a behind-the-scenes look at the making of Cook Real Hawaii. And when we return, we'll taste the sardine poo-poo and dry, dive into questions with you, Chef. Awesome. All right. Love it. I've got gardens growing got quiet days Clothes on my back Food on my plate I got friends to help me If I call for them Well I don't need anything I don't have I got eyes to see Beautiful land Your feet to take me where I want to stand If there's work to be done There's these two strong hands I don't need anything I don't have Floods clear the plains If those waters wash this town away I would still have enough If she was with me I've got a roof over there Stars if I choose But I've no itch to fly I've got no need to move I got almost nothing But I understand Don't need anything I don't have Don't need anything I don't have Don't need anything I don't So thank you, Chef, and thank you for taking our viewers through an, a wonderful cooking session. Yes. Uh, it was so fun to see kind of the behind the scenes of you making your cookbook. Yeah. Um, all right. And also, you know, we're looking forward to um, learning more about your Top Chef secrets and lots of other fun things. <laughs> so as a reminder for everyone, we are accepting entries for our giveaway of an autographed copy of Cook Grill Hawaii. Be sure to enter now by clicking the link in the comment section and we'll announce the winner at the end of today's event. All right. So before we get um, to the segment, we asked our audience where you began your culinary adventure. The options were <laughs> one, um, Maui Culinary Institute, two, Walt Disney World, three, Culinary Institute of the Pacific, and four, Ohana Mixed Plate. So can you reveal the answer? Uh, yeah, so Walt Disney World. What? 
Yes. All, all the way out there. Yeah, that's actually, I actually did a college uh, internship there. And that's actually where I met my wife, Janice. Go out to Orlando to meet a Maui girl. And here I am now. All right. In Maui. That's such an awesome. I don't think I would have originally guessed that. So, <laughs> I mean, that's like a next level kind of training. Yeah. No, it, it was cool to, to, you know, at that point, I was like super local boy going out there and into a new world and yeah grew up super a quick. whole new world yeah. is it what do they call it <laughs> a, a whole new world yeah <laughs> so who's your favorite disney character uh goofy goofy is my favorite that makes sense that, 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 makes that guy's sense. that guy's hilarious yeah. <laughs> all right okay so now we're gonna jump into um the questions with chef and we're gonna actually first do a little tasting here. So I know, I promise not to double dip so others here can try. So I'm just gonna taste one. All right, so we got the sardines and the, all right, I'm just gonna go like this. Oh my God, this is so much nerve wracking. Mmm. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. There's just like really thick sardine too. Like a lot of protein. Yeah, no, these, uh, these, these anchovies that came from uh, Patagonia, like mm -hmm. they're they're super super meaty. I love it. It's it's like something simple again, and then flavored with the things that we have in our pantry: chili pepper, water. You know, if I had if I had some calamansi, I'd put it in the in the oil too, and uh, it's just something that I grew up eating. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. So we got the anchovies here. All right, my bad. No, you're good. No, that, that's. <laughs> Same thing. You know, same thing. Just okay. that's all my my father. Whatever tin fish was always sardines. No matter what <laughs> it was, he would call them sardines. All right. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> all right. So we've got a whole bunch of questions from people. So our audience here. So we're gonna jump right in, if you don't mind. Um, so we have a question here from Gita in San Francisco. Can you eat the sardines straight from the tin? Yeah, of course you can eat. One of my favorite ways, actually. We used to heat it up on the stove, so it's like perfect timing. You crack your can of sardines, put it on the stove, grab your bowl of rice, and by the time you come back, it's at the perfect warmness. All right. that's, it. that's it, straight from the can. That's how we used to do it. All right, super <laughs> convenient. You can do it on the beach too. Do it yeah. at the beach. Bring your chili pepper water straight into the can. <laughs> All right, so our next question is from Nancy in Las Vegas. I love soups. What kind of soups can I make with anchovies or sardines or oh shoot, tin fishes? Yeah, I would love to make uh, miso soup. is is a fast way. So you know, you can you can buy pre-made dashi and miso, and then just add fish, uh, a little bit of sardines inside of that, and it gives you that protein in there. Works and that natural perfect. broth that gets created because of the. The fish. The fish is in there. It's it's gonna taste, you know, that that umami from the fish. Even that oil that's gonna mix with the miso is gonna be really, really delicious. Oh, all right, there you have it. Um, all right, so our next question comes from Amy in Oregon. <laughs> what do you love most about cooking? Ooh, how much oh, time do we man. have? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I always tell people that I, I might be a good, you know, I'm a, I'm okay cook, but I'm a definitely better eater. <laughs> I love to eat more than more than anything. But my favorite thing is just uh, seeing people's reaction and having that opportunity to nourish someone and just having that moment to cook for someone and them enjoy my food. That's like the biggest reward, right. feeding people. That's all. <laughs> super, super simple. And it can just be like that smile. It is. It's that yeah. smile. If I get the reaction of them, like their head go back and they, they're enjoying themselves, that's... That's more than enough. That's awesome. All right, we have lots of questions. All so right, keep going. Keep it okay? going. I All love right. It. So our next question is from Kyle in Washington. Tell us more about Tin Roof. What are your top dishes? Oh man. Machico chicken. I had that earlier. Yeah, machico <laughs> chicken. That's by far, you know, fifty percent of the people that walk in there order our machico chicken, and we're proud of it. You know, we wanted to have something that was gonna be like our showcase and I'm happy that it's the mochiko chicken. Everybody has their own fried chicken, right? Like the Korean fried chicken and then the South have their Southern style fried chicken. Mochiko is the fried chicken of Hawaii. And I love it that we sell tons and tons of it. I had a beet salad too, right? Yeah, beet salad. It's again, it's all these dishes that is 
amazing. So we get our local beets and we top it off with some garlic aioli, some pickled uh, kale on top of it, and then a futakake crumble that is flavored with funyuns of all things. Oh, all right. So what your time are you open? 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. or? Uh, we are or? actually open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Oh, now. Okay. Uh, before we only used to do lunch, but uh, now we're open up for dinner. So give you guys more of a chance to come and check us out. All right. Sounds great. I know we always have to order in advance, right? That's it. That's <laughs> the best way. If you guys are coming in, use the MoFast Pass. Go to our uh, website and uh, order it up and you'll be ready to go right at the door. All right. Cool. All right. Our next question is from Natalie in Honolulu. What are uh, some of the health benefits of eating anchovies or sardines. Oh man, you're asking the wrong guy about health benefits. <laughs> but, but, but what I can see is, you know, uh, I think natural la oils, laughter right? And laughter and happiness when you're eating it. Exactly. That's very healthy. No, you probably got your omegas, right, from the, the, the fish oils that is in there too. And then you get your protein. Uh, I think it's just for convenience wise, you know. And this, especially when you're using stuff like like the Patagonia stuff, they're, they're sustainably, uh, the sourced. way that it's sourced yeah. and the way that they handle and the, the way that they treat their fishermen, that's, that's what you, the type of people that you want to support. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It means something to come from a good source. So yeah. Yeah. All right. So next question, we have Aaron from Columbia. Um, oh, Columbia, George in Washington. Okay. Um, do you store the chili pepawata yeah. <laughs> in the refrigerator? Uh, I do, just because I like to sip on my chili pepper water as a condiment. And I find that it's uh, as spicy as it is, it's also a refreshing way of cleaning your palate. So uh, I do it both ways. Uh, I have one in the refrigerator that I use when I want to sip on my chili pepper water and then I leave one out on the table to season all of my food. So if you're sipping, is it throughout the whole dish? Is it more like a aperitif or di a digestif like after dinner? Uh, it's it's depending on what I'm eating, but if I like eating something like lao lao and beef stew, I'm going to be sipping throughout the whole, whole way. It's definitely a Hilo style. You go to my dad's house, all his friends would bring their chili pepper waters and then their shot glasses yeah, one for maybe whiskey and tequila, but the other one is definitely for chili pepper water shots. So like all the uncles or all the dads, they would compete or would it be more like, yeah, it's yours friendly. is good for this, yours is good for that? Friendly competition though. Every, what, I, what I, we benefited was all the chili peppers, they would never take it home. So uncles would bring their chili pepper water and they would try it and then they would stay. So my chili pepper water is like an homage to those guys of like, all their different styles put together. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, we got a next question from Amy. Um, how should I eat this deliciousness? With a cracker or just by itself? <laughs> yeah, with a cracker is definitely uh, a, an awesome way, but uh, this is gonna go with rice for sure. You wanna take some of that, that sauce, go over the top, or crack some beer, crack a beer right alongside and get your chopsticks out. You can go paleo style, no carbs. No carbs. Yeah. <laughs> or you can go rice. <laughs> All right, cool. Next question we have for Marie. What are Hawaiian chilies? Hawaiian chili is kind of an offbeat of like the Thai bird chili. Uh, if you don't have your sourcing of Hawaiian chilies, you can use some Thai bird chilies. I believe it, brought, it was brought by a Spanish horticulturalist. Like, I forget what year it was, but... Uh, yeah, it has like the spice of a habanero, but the flavor of a Thai chili almost. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, our next question from Brian. What's the difference between anchovies and sardines? Yeah. <laughs> I keep interchanging <laughs> them. Yeah, so what is the actual difference? The actual difference is just the, the type of fish. They're both small little tin fish, which is crazy because we're surrounded by Pacific Ocean and Hawaii doesn't have their own tin fish. Uh, anchovies are a lot smaller. Uh, than sardines. Um, they're part of the same scad family, I believe, but uh, it's just the size mostly. Thank you. <laughs> I just learned something. Yeah. Okay, um, we have a next question from Barbara from Honolulu. What inspires you to create new dishes? Oh man, uh, everything inspires me. It's, uh, as I continue on this journey as a chef, you know, you pull from things that you see, whether it's like a dish 
that my family was making. You know, my adobo is an example of it. I'm inspired by my travel that I went to the Philippines with. Uh, and I'm inspired by the way that my uncle used to make it. And, uh, and inspired by all these other Filipino chefs, the way that they make adobo. And then I take those cues and make my own. So the other day I was listening to, uh, to Cardi B and she said lemon lamb. But she was talking about her yellow colored Lamborghini. So I was thinking, maybe I can make some lamb with some lemon on top. <laughs> so it comes from all different places. Yeah. You never know. And maybe not take cues from Cardi B too much. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Keep us posted. That'll be the next recipe we do here. <laughs> That's awesome. So I guess along those lines, I have a question. Yeah. I know so many of your dishes are like super unique um, and really bringing in like Filipino flavors and flavors mm -hmm. that maybe the average person hasn't even tried before. Yeah. Um, are you seeing any kind of new trends with any Filipino yeah. ingredients that you think are going to be kind of the next big thing? Because I'm reading all these articles about Filipino food yeah. being the hottest thing right now, even in New York. And so, yeah, yeah. can you share? Well, I love that like, you know, we've ha we have our spotlight now, you know, like uh, uh, we have a platform with some amazing chefs uh, that have win have won James Beard Award, you know, like the, the restaurant Bad Saint was best restaurant in the country a few years ago, best new restaurant. And uh, Filipino food is out there and I love seeing things being incorporated. I think, uh, what restaurant, what three Michelin star restaurant was that in, uh, in New York? But I seen that they had a lumpia on one of their tasting menus, you know, just to see some a small snippet of that and people utilize Filipino cuisine and be inspired by it is is awesome. But I think that's going a lot for a lot of these uh, these these cultures that haven't had their spotlight mm -hmm. in the past. You know, Korean food is like the the everyone has Korean food everywhere. We had poke across the country, so Filipino food is right there right. in the mix. Love it. All right. All right, we got so many questions here. All right, we've got Matt, um, who's coming in here. Chef Sheldon, what was your favorite dish you made on Top Chef? Oh, <laughs> uh, man, my favorite dish on Top Chef uh, had to be um, a dish uh, inspired by my mom, uh, the Mickey noodles. And uh, yeah, it was just a simple, humble dish reminiscent of how my mom used to make it but uh, anytime that I do a dish that is inspired by my mom I, I always think about her and uh, I miss her a lot I look at my girls and I see her see her face in them and they love food just as much as as she did and uh, yeah she's one of my biggest inspirations in my, my cuisine yeah. for sure my cooking wow. all right well thank you for sharing <laughs> um, all right we have another question here from Derek how's it chef <laughs> what are other dishes you use the lemon oil on? Oh man, lemon oil. If you've been to any of my restaurants all the way from back from star noodle days to migrant to lineage and even now at the uh, at tin roof lemon oil has been a part of it. It's just it's amazing like condiment. One of my favorite ways that I, I like it is on sashimi uh, because I love the citrus flavor of it but it doesn't have the acidity that will cook the fish. So you still get that, that beautiful like velvet texture of sashimi without it being cooked by the citrus. So you just drizzle it on? Drizzle oh. it on top, citrus flavor without it cooking it. All right, I'll have to yeah. try that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Calvin from Stockton. Can you play the ukulele for us? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we'll, we'll do a... An outro. Yeah, we'll an outro. We'll do an outro. <laughs> All right, cool. We've got here uh, Mike, Brother Sheldon. Have you ever pickled mango in the chili water? Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a fun way for sure. Pickled mango in chili pepper water is a uh, honomu. That's like a few miles out of, out of Hilo. That's an old school honomu tactic right there. And uh, even just making like taking your classic pickle mango recipe, even buy them from the store, put a chili pepper right inside, mm. then you get spicy pickle mango, super ono. All right, better watch out though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next question we have from Alan: Do you prefer chicken or pork adobo? Oh man, uh, yeah, I like. I'm definitely a pork belly adobo. 
Just like brings in the flavors, Maria. No, and there's nothing against chicken, chicken adobo. Pork belly is my favorite vegetable by far. <laughs> so, and then just, 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 just the way that, that was the way that my family made it was always with pork belly. And this the way that it's just, you know, gluttonous almost and just like, I don't know, just that's the way that I like mm -hmm. it. Pork belly all the way. All right, I love it. We had a couple <laughs> Mix more. Mix them together, actually. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah that's my a good one. Mm -hmm. Friends, family, that's how they do it in, like, their, in their region. Okay. They so make you're... chicken and pork adobo together. Yeah, that's what I love about adobo and learning. It's like there's so, depending on where your family comes from in the Philippines, everyone has their own style. But everyone's auntie get the best adobo. Mm -hmm. Of course. Auntie, you're claiming still yet, yeah, best adobo out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got another question um, from Elsa. What celebrity chefs do you look up to? Oh, man. Or was like inspirational for yeah, you growing I think, up? Yeah, I think one of the biggest ones uh, is Gordon Ramsay. Uh, and I got the pleasure of doing uh, and filming with him out here in Hana. And how down to earth uh, he is. He's such a huge star with millions of views on all of his, his TV shows and videos. But when he was here, he's like stressed on his family. Like his, fa he puts his family first beyond anything. And I had that moment just to talk story. I was like, "How you do it, chef?" It's like, "You do it for your family. That's it." Like Gordon Ramsay, yeah. he's a man through and through. We have a great family. Yeah. It was great to meet them here today too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question we have from Brooke. Did you or Gordon Ramsay burn your legs when you cooked eggs with him over an open pit? <laughs> these are, we're getting some real questions here. Yeah, no, I, I mean, think we... These, I, aren't, these aren't a practice. These yeah, are real questions yeah. coming in. No, we did. It's, uh, that, that was, that we cooked in that emu that was dug out, and then we uh, made our hibachis in there. And, yeah, we burnt a few leg hairs ah. that day. Got some scars to show <laughs> for, yeah? some scars to tell. <laughs> All right, cool. So next question we have from Matt. What's your guilty pleasure meal? Oh, guilty pleasure meal is a bag of wavy Lay's potato chips. Once I crack that red bag, it's over. I'm going to mm. eat the whole thing all the way from, from the store to the house. And then, yeah. I'm sorry. Right. That. That's a good one. It's nice and convenient. Yeah, wavy Lay's. <laughs> I just confessed on camera, wavy lays. You're like, what's your favorite <laughs> sweet meal? It's like wavy lays. <laughs> All right, you guys heard it here first. <laughs> okay, we have a couple more questions, and then we're going to start wrapping up and announce our winner. Yes. All right, so we got a comment from Tim. Aloha from Bend, Oregon, Chef. I'm also right. making your nori chicken tonight. Oh, so right. that's a good comment. Uh, we got a question from Alan. Any of your kids seem like they're wanting to be chefs like you. What do they cook for you besides yeah. cereal? No, uh, <laughs> my, all my kids, they love cooking. My oldest daughter is actually, she, she works at Tin Roof, and she worked there for the summer. They all love cooking. But uh, my youngest daughter, Quinn, is always in the mix making stuff. And this morning, she is actually, uh, she made herself a breakfast sandwich, you know, with with bacon and a sunny side egg and cut all the, the edges off. So I don't know that one might be might be the next one. Wow. She's already making videos. I see her with her phone and she's like, hi, I'm Quinn. I wonder where she gets that from. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, next question. Would we from Crystal, would we be able to get all the items here in Iowa to cook this up before coming to Hawaii? Oh, totally. I think a lot of the items is, is stuff that you could get at your grocery store. Maybe not the Hawaiian chili peppers, but if you can get just any chili pepper, Thai chili pepper, you can get a habanero, a jalapeno, and everything else. You know, apple cider vinegar, soy sauce, it's all there. Yeah, nothing's crazy special. That's what is unique. Everyone thinks like Hawaii food is yeah. ex exotic and things. No, we had to cook with what get in the, in the pantry. So. Well, that's what I loved about what you picked for today. Um, that these are ingredients that are accessible to everyone. Yeah, I think yeah. and then there's like these moments of humbleness when we think of our cuisine. We've had it, you know, with Hawaii reg regional cuisine where it's like on these platforms where it's like super fancy, but this is just as important of where the food that we eat at are in our homes too. So. Yeah. 
All right. Mm-hmm. Well, we cranked through a lot of questions. There were actually a lot more, yeah. but we got we to gotta start moving forward here. Um, but yeah. before we close today, our Meet the Makers event, we're going to announce our lucky winner. Yes. Who is going to get the personalized autographed copy of Chef's Cookbook. Um, it's called Cook Real Hawaii. Yeah. We got it right here. So Chef's going to sign it up. Um, all right, so we got a drum roll. I don't know how to do the drum roll. Um, our, <laughs> our winner tonight is Adrian from Boulder, Colorado. Congratulations, Yay, Adrian. Adrian. Woo! And so we'll be contacting you to redeem your prize, and Chef will be signing it right here today. Yeah. Mahalo, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Chef. This was so awesome. This was awesome. We had a blast transporting you here right to Wailuku. (laughs) And thank you again for an epic cooking class during the third stop of our Meet the Makers virtual island hopping tour. If you didn't get a chance to snag Chef Sheldon's Cook Real Hawaii cookbook before today's event, it's not too late. You can get yours and visit houseofmanaup.com. The Makers tab is in the top right corner or scan the QR code below. We also have a very limited number of cookbooks autographed by the legend himself, (laughs) so purchase yours now. Next month, we'll travel to Honoka on the island of Hawaii, where we will step into the workshop of Chelsea Davis, the founder and formulator behind all natural skincare company, Ao Organics. Chelsea will guide us through a simple daily routine to get glowing skin and create an at-home Hawaiian spa for some much needed self-care, especially during times like these. If you're with Hawaiian Airlines Bank of Hawaii World Elite MasterCard and you're a holder, keep an eye out for your monthly Hawaiian mile statements for more exclusive perks. When you purchase our organics, meet the maker's spa kit at full price between now and tonight at 11.59 p.m. Hawaii time, add on any Owl Organic skincare product, one product, and receive 15% off. To RSVP for this event and get the spa kit, head to our Meet the Makers page or scan the QR code below. All right, Chef, I'm going to let you say goodbye, and then I'm going to say a a mahalo. Goodbye. (laughs) Goodbye. Mahalo, everybody. Thank you, guys. Go get the cookbook. I can't wait to see you guys see it. And when you guys cook, always put extra aloha in them. And some lemon oil to you. Yeah, that too. All right. All right. Mahalo, everyone. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Aloha. Oh, what's these? Oh, oh, ukulele. We got it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>